Welcome back to another British Fist Q&A sponsored by none other than... Monster Energy. <laughs> For the times when you need Monster and you don't have five hour energy like Full Killer does on his reviews. This is a Q&A of us, the British Fist. Go! Mr. Go. Park in here and as I rushed onwards because I really wanted to get to your little thing. What's up? I can't believe you're wearing a monster shirt. Did they pay you to wear that? All they did. Are I'm you going to be a this? monster model, you know? Monster model. Fucking LNJ. I'm, okay, in that case, I'm going to be a Sting model. Yeah, I can't really do that, can I? I'm wearing a Sting shirt, everyone. Or yes, I'm wearing a shirt of a 54-year-old man. So fucking what? Anyway, let's get down to this Q&A. If you want to send us in questions, please do. We've got a massive lift of questions, but we will answer them as soon as we can. Inbox us is the best way of doing it. Do it on Facebook, post it to us on Facebook, or use the Twitter hashtag BritishFistQA on Twitter, and we will see those questions a lot easier. The best way to do it, though, is through inbox. And the thing about this Q&A is we're five Q&As away. We are five Q&As away from the 100th Q&A. Fucking hell, our time flies. Anyway, leave comments 100. We can't let time fly on this one, NJ. Who's your favorite WWE diva of all time? There's two that stand out for different reasons, but number one is none other than Lita. Yep, Lita's a good one, and I guess the other one you're thinking of is Trish Stratus. Right? Oh, because Trish Stratus is mine. I, I always like Trish Stratus. Um, I Sean X, your dream match for WrestleMania 30. I'm gonna go with Cena versus Undertaker. You were going with Austin versus Punk, I guess. I two good matches. Just because mine's been teased. It's a match that bring Austin back, which WS seems to be doing the last few years, bringing back big names to put over talent. There we go. Both would be worthy main events, in my opinion. How would the, even though the smart mark audience would obviously prefer your match, but I think the casual audiences would maybe prefer my match. I don't know. How would the man or how would star on YouTube now? If WWE stopped having the brand split and combined the NXT talent, would Raw be huge now? Probably would, um, but they've brought in a lot of NXT talent as it is. I mean, they've got The Shield, which is three guys. They've got Big E Langston, got people like Antonio Cesaro. So the roster's already quite big, and we needed these new styles, let's face it. I personally think the brand split would be a big hit, but the NXT thing, as Dan said, it's been done already. So as, the, as they continue doing what they are, I don't think anything will make much difference. To be honest with you, and I don't think WWE should just debut guys willy-nilly. I think they do, when they debut people like Fandango or other people that have debuted, they need to give them some direction so they can actually brought, be brought in strongly. Otherwise, guys that were previously brought in the roster strongly, like this say Mason Ryan, will end up being going into obscurity again. So for that point, they should keep them on NXT and only bring them in when, they, you know, when they've got some kind of direction or some purpose on the show. And Punkasaurus. Yeah, and the Funkasaurus. Could you see the Rock versus Alberto Del Rio? Hey, but at least the Funkasaurus is getting on the WrestleMania card. Rock versus Alberto Del Rio. No, we won't see that because Del Rio isn't a big enough star to face the Rock in a big money match. It just ain't going to happen, I'm afraid. Uh, RPG Rich Porter. Mr. Parkin, is there still a top four in the Premiership? And who is your top four in both TNA and WWE? Uh, there's not a top four in the Premiership right now. It's the top two. It's between Man, Man United and Man City. And Man United are running ahead of City right now. Um, so, to be honest, no, there is no Premiership Top 4 anymore unless Chelsea or Arsenal or Liverpool or Tottenham up their act a little bit. Uh, top 4 in both TNA and WWE. Well, in TNA, my top 4, I guess, will be Austin Aries, uh, Bobby Roode. Uh, those are definitely my top 2. Um, WWE, I like, obviously, like I like The Miz. I like Cody Rhodes. I like Damian Sandow. So, there are some of the guys that I like on there. Do high flyers get pushed uh, better than Matt? Why do... Rest high flyers get pushed better than mat wrestlers nowadays. Um, or do they? Not, not really. High flyers. When was the last time we had a massive high flyer as a Ray. as a champion? Ray. And when was the last time we had a mat wrestler as a champion? Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Daniel Bryan. Exactly. So I think something. But I think the high flyers can be used better in the mid card, whereas I think mat wrestlers are generally a lot better used in the main event. I guess that's just my way of looking at it. Um, our basic finishers, aka the. JBL clothesline leg drop better than submission holds to end a match with. It just depends on the start of a wrestler. Like angle, you expect ankle yeah. lock. Instead of doing Olympic slam, I'm glad that he eventually grew to the ankle lock. Other wrestlers like Taker in just a triangle hold. You didn't really see that being Taker. You saw the choke slam tombstone. Mm. So I think it depends on the type of wrestler. It depends on the wrestler. I mean, Hogan's leg drop fit Hogan. So that worked. You know, JBL's clothesline, it fit JBL. You know, as a finisher, so it worked. Um, and if you gave Hogan a submission hold to end a match with, it just wouldn't work. So it just depends on the character that you're giving these to. Mr. TNA 2005, 
Uh, if Taryn Terrell referee, referee a match in the Premier League, what mark do you think she will get? Probably nothing because the male fans would just be sexist bastards and probably make fun of her like they do with the only female linesman. Do you remember Romania versus England at World Cup 98 and at Euro 2000 when the results were like always between these two teams of Romania winning? Yes, I remember. I try and forget. Which Romanian football players do you know? What, what do you know about Romania? Not all that much, apart from Kivu, I'm afraid, my friend. If Triple H and Jeff Jarrett would be the only inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2014, who do you think would talk more and how much time extension would the official ask? <laughs> Between Jeff Jarrett and Triple H, who would talk the most? When we see, we all know that <laughs> WWE like to very put down other companies, so Triple H will make sure he gets the last word in. Triple H would get more time than Jeff Jarrett, uh, but if it was the TNA Hall of Fame, you can guarantee same Jeff thing. Jarrett would probably get more time. When Jeff Jarrett returns in TNA with the RKK faction, who do you see as the deserving wrestlers to be on? A female too. Um, RKK, do you know any idea what that is? I don't know what it is, so unfortunately we cannot answer the question. Um, Simone Clayton, do you think Jeff Jarrett was the mastermind in creating the TNA Hall of Fame so he could get in the Hall of Fame? Probably, but we'll see wrestlers in there, I think, before him, like Sting, like maybe Hogan, if they decide to put him in there. Maybe, you know, AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, Samojo. I think we'll see other people in there. But to be honest, with TNA, it was a little bit early to do a Hall of Fame, but I understand why they're doing a Hall of Fame. I, I mean, why not do a Hall of Fame one a year? But was it done just to put Jarrett in there? You know, maybe. But, I mean, Vincent Mann hasn't put himself in his Hall of Fame, so... Well, the fact that Sting was the first one in, uh, I think that doesn't show... If Jarrett made it, he put himself in first mm. and said, I'm number one in my own Hall of Fame. So I'd say, no, I think it was just made, probably made by someone else. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think it was just done for the company, personally, not just for Jeff Jarrett, even though he can be very selfish, but that's another argument for another day. TNA Universe, uh, TNA, TNA Universe 83, which faction had the ball drop more, Nexus or the Aces and Eights? I would say Nexus purely because at least now the Aces and Eights have got something Whereas the Nexus just went nowhere, even though we get to see where the Ace and Ace are going to go. The other, I'm the other way around. The reason why, you made a good point, but my big point is the Nexus made Barrett stand out. You all knew who Barrett was by the end. With the Ace and Ace, we already know who Buddy Ray is, mm. so that's not really going to make Buddy Ray stand out. So Nexus made but Barrett's done that more than what the Ace and Ace is. Yet Barrett hasn't been a world champion, but Bully Ray is now the top heel in TNA. Still just just saying, booking, yeah. will you watch and review the one night only TNA pay-per-view shows? We will. We'll give them a chance and see what they're like. Um, but if they're not to our standards, then we won't. But we'll give them one go. Uh, is it just me or is TNA up on pop culture more than WWE? We saw Daniels do Gangnam Style. They have the house show, Harlem Shake video, and Sting started using the Heath Ledger Joker character just as examples. It seems like WWE have no idea what's going on outside the company a lot of their time. There is some validity to that. I mean, TNA have used a lot more pop culture than WWE, but WWE has used the Gangnam style, I believe, with the Brodus Clay and the uh, Sweet Tea of Tag Num Team. Number one, yeah, the Gangnam style pop culture is all about wrestling, so yeah. And the other thing is, when it comes to big events, we have WWE with big names, like yeah. the music and all those. So it's like t WWE know what they're doing at the right time. They do, and we've had, we've definitely had other examples of WWE, like the whole the Jack Swagger Del Rio storyline, which was rel kind of relevant in pop culture with you know with the Republicans and the Democrats, etc. Um, there have been other examples. So the fan the Pandango character is another example of staying up to date with pop culture with the with the resurgence of the Dancing with the Stars program or whatever you want to call it. So TNA are are up on pop culture. WWE are there. I think TNA just present it a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, next question. Film of Greatness, Films of Greatness 23. Do you think WWE will turn on heel anytime soon? He was not so annoying when he was a st dominant, scary heel. Um, with this whole voice of reason thing on SmackDown that they've done with Randy Orton, they they may. I mean, I, there are there are. I know there are plans to do it. I'm just wondering when. But I think it is about time Randy Orton did turn heel again. It's been what three years as a babyface, and at most of them have been quite boring. At the minute, as long as we get a character in the WWE, yes, we're getting Del Rio now, so it's more acceptable to turn some people heel. But it just depends if Del Rio is going to work long term before they turn a face heel. Hmm. Which current main event face do you think the WWE will make heel? Orton. It's not going to be Orton or Ryback, in my opinion. There was a slight 
feeling they were going to do it with Sheamus again, but if I had to pick anyone, it would be Orton. Yeah, I mean, I think they did tease it with Sheamus, but I think Sheamus definitely is needed as a babyface. Definitely, WWE need babyface stars at this point in time. Which main event wrestler do you think needs a heel change slash face change? Uh, say Orton again, but we'll we'll pick someone else. Um, but at the minute, they've already done what I wanted, yeah, which yeah. is Miz being a big example. There's been ideas of Ziggler, but I think Ziggler at the moment is good where he's at. Eventually, they're going to break up tag teams. You're going to have to tell one like either Cody Rhodes or Cody David Rhodes. Sandow. Yeah. I was thinking Cody Rhodes. Not that I want him to turn face or anything. I don't think he needs to turn face, but... um. Uh, right now, they've pretty much done all the faces and heel changes that were needed, in my opinion. So, right now, keep it as it is. Uh, Super Sage Saiyan Jin, 11. What is your favorite Royal Rumble and why? Uh, my favorite Royal Rumble is always going to be number Royal Rumble 2000. Purely on the basis that not only was it a good event, in my opinion. Not only did it have one of the best matches that I've watched. Not only did it have my favorite wrestler winning the winning the Royal Rumble. Not only did it have a fantastic tables match with, Jeff, with the Hardy Boys versus the Early Boys, but... It was the first pay-per-view that I watched on TV, and I remember recording it on Channel 4, which is on Terrestrial Free TV. For thank, you, thank you thank you, to my brother for doing that, by the way, staying up late and watching it. Just Raw Rumble 2000 was, will always be my favourite one, and it's, it's because of the sentimentality of it being my first one. Well, I'm going to go a bit earlier than that. Well, you are a bit older than me. The one I'd probably <laughs> go to is the one that none other than the game, Triple H won, and the fact we had... Mr. Perfect make oh, yeah. a return. In the top four. Yeah, so I think that stood out as one of the best. Because one of your, your favourite wrestlers won. Yeah, the, the way it went the down, like, yeah. Kurt was all like, yes, I've won! Huh? <laughs> what? And then we went, oh, very good finish. Yes. Uh, all right, so different reasons. Um, my the, my favourite superstar won the Rumble in 2000. Your favourite superstar won the Rumble in 2002. So that's kind of there. I rolled 4545. Where do you think the Shield will be involved in WrestleMania 29? Uh, this would have been asked, asked before they would have, he would have known, he or she would have known. But if, even before they announced it, you knew that it was going to be something to do with Orton and Sheamus and maybe someone else. I'm a bit disappointed the way that they're booked at WrestleMania. They're in another three on three. Yes, they're teasing probably going into singles matches, but I'm just a bit put off by three by three. But if other than that, I would have probably had them go for the tag titles. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else they could have done with the Shield other than put them in a three-on-three. Three. They want to make them stand out on the card, and what better way to do that than to have them go up against Sheamus and Orton, the two biggest baby faces on SmackDown, and the big shows, you know, quite a big heel for SmackDown. Um, so even before we knew the matches, we knew it was going to be the Shield versus, in my opinion, I knew it was going to be Shield versus Orton and Sheamus and someone else, so I'll just say that. ATK360, and this is a very good question, by the way, you asked. Do you think that the Smarks can't enjoy wrestling, uh, WWE, as much as casual fans because they know too much about the business and take things way too seriously? Yes. I mean, when you were a casual fan, did you really care about the booking? Did you really care about the heels going over? Did you really care about, you know, let's say a Garrett Bischoff back in the day, like a Shane McMahon being pushed? You know, that, that's the thing. When you are a kid, you didn't care about these kind of things back in the Attitude Era, which is why a lot of people on YouTube will always hark back to the Attitude Era. But now you know more about the business, which we do. We've been doing this for about two, two and odd years now. It does affect your enjoyment. It really does. It does. But it's embedded into us now, so we can't really do anything about it. Well, with me personally, as much as, like I've said many times in past videos, I'm a two-sided person. So when it comes to wrestling, I've always looked at it from the style that they're trying to put out, the enjoyment you're meant to get from the matches and the result of the matches. But at the same time, I do think of the whole... Where does this go next? Yeah. What's going to happen here? What's the point of doing this? What's the point of doing that? So I'm from both point of view, but yeah. And when we've been doing, we've been doing this now for over two years and you do get to a point where you become very, very analytical because you're trying to review a show that you know smart marks are going to be watching and really that casual fans aren't because what casual fans really, very, very few go on YouTube to look at the review of a show they've just watched, which they probably didn't know too much about in the first place. So you know, I think this is very true. There, there are certain people out there, including myself. I, I'm, I'm guilty of this. Sometimes people like me, or smarks, as you want to maybe want to call them, can't enjoy wrestling as much as casual fans because they just know too much about the business. And they know too much about the ins and outs. It's, it's a very true and a very, very good question. The thing is, with wrestling, it's been in, in, because in my blood, I'm not like the rock or someone, but I've been watching for many years. So even though I work stuff out and look at it differently, it still has helped me grow up and enjoy something, so it's always going to be there. But at the end of the day, we're always going to be fans. So that's the silver lining there, I guess. Who do you think will win the Champions League this year? 
I go with Bayern Munich. Uh, that's you that said that. I think it will be either Real Madrid or Barcelona. I think personally. No. Well, that's because you don't care about football. Uh, the AJ Assassin. Would you do a British Fist versus OCRS and WJ as a special referee? Why do why you want a few with friends? A few and two. O T. Off. I think it's off the rope show. But why, why would we want a feud against friends? Just saying. Who do you even care about? Do you even care about Triple H versus Lesnar 2 and Cena versus Rock 2? Yeah. I, I care about Triple H versus Lesnar 2. I mean, that should be a good match. Cena versus Rock 2, I think I should have cared more about if WWE had built it a little bit better and actually had you know, some decent, different build to it. But I, Lesnar and Triple H more than Cena Rock. I'd care more about my favourite wrestler going against Lesnar if the stipulation was done back at SummerSlam mm. building up to WrestleMania. But the fact that he didn't do that, it's still going to be a, probably a brutal match, which oh, is yeah. what I want to see. As for Roxanne 2, you've heard my views on this. It's absolutely shit. Of course. Uh, have you seen the Man of Steel trailer and are you seeing it? Yes, I've seen it. Uh, the trailer, the movie. I've still got a big list to go through, but yes. <laughs> what are your top three worst moments in WWE and TNA? Okay, this is going to be a good one. In TNA... Victory Road 2011, when Jeff Hardy came to the ring stoned and drunk, or whatever he was, and the uh, match lasted about one and a half minutes. Uh, WWE, when they went to three hours. Uh, also in WWE, when May, May, May Young gave birth to a hand. Any other brutal moments which you can think of? In TNA, I think when they started to try and took different with the 8 and 8 faction, that threw my attention off TNA for yeah. a long yeah. time. Yeah, it dragged the show down, didn't it? There's that, yes. And in WWE... I could say WrestleMania 29 when John Cena beats The Rock, but let's wait to see what happens first. But for now, I'd say the amount of time John Cena's won the championship, because there's something we could bring up for an example, is Shun have won it, which was, I think, one of the WrestleManias when he was facing Big Show and Edge, and he lost on the next pay per view why he swapped the championships. Uh, but yes, that's a big example of that. Which footballer would be a better wrestler after Rooney, Messi, Ronaldo, and Joe Hart? Probably be Rooney because he has a boxing background. If you both fell out and gave each other a horrible match to compete in, what would it be, etc.? For example, NJ, and I burped. Sorry, that's probably one of the reasons why you might fall out with me. Gives Mr. Park in a 2 one handicap match, Steel Cage against Triple H and Kane. So, yeah, what match would you give me, you bastard? Piece of shit. What match um, would you give the me? The match I was thinking for Mr. Parkin, he'd be against. Let's have a look at the roster. I'd say. If I think she did come a good example, the whole. If you want to punish me, go ahead. I'll handle it. I'll take it. I'm a tough boy. I've got a tough chin. Give me a sec. I'm gonna say, let's make it a handicap match. Undertaker, because I want to see that, and I think the other person should be none other than. This there'll be good in this, but some bad thing in this because we know he never loses matches. John Cena. Well, if I was going to give you a match, I'd have to give you a match against someone who you hate the most, and I would book John Cena to beat you to. Uh, in oh god, in a dress. I'd get, I'd say like a sort of um, uh, monster on a pole match between you and John Cena, and John Cena would win, and then would like shake up the monster in your face, and you'd be fucking annoyed. That's what I would do to you if we fell out, which ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen, people. It's just hypothetical. The last five questions we're going to do are from Mr. TNA2005. If Austin Aries and Bobby Roode would be involved in a match for the world title and at the end of the match they both pin the same guy to win the match and both become the new oh. TNA whatever champion. Uh, this is going, you can see where this one's going. And have a three month run. How would you feel about that? Way too complicated. Why have them both hold the same title? And I don't get why you'd want to do that. They did to the, the WWE did it to the Divas and spit in half. So yeah. you give half the belt to Roode, half the belt to Aries. Okay. Okay. I uh, wonder if the eighth wonder of the world and the great factor would have a three month feud ending at Summerversary. It would be without any doubt the best feud of the year by Miles. Could that be the feud of the decade when it comes to tag teams, just like from WWE oh, fans? Man. Like you were probably the TLC tag title match, or for me, the AMW versus Triple X feud. Uh, Bobby Roode and Austin Aries would have a very good feud, but we've already seen it. So, yes. No, and they're a tag team now, so let's keep them as a tag team. Which is your favourite and, in your opinion, best tag team feud ever? For me, it is uh, AMW versus Triple X. You know, back in... I mean, I know you're a TNA fan in the early days back then. That was a good tag team feud. But for me, as a fan, I haven't been watching TNA that long. Be a Money versus Motorcycle Machine Guns was a really good feud. But I don't think you can get much better than the whole thing between Edge and Christian, Dudley Boys and the Hardy Boys back in the Attitude Era. 
um, in my opinion, because that's what that's what we saw. I'm not saying it was the best. I'm saying that was what we were. That's what we grew up with back then. I'll go with the beer money one. The beer money one was good. What about like the Four Horsemen versus other people? NWO versus T uh, versus WCW or DX versus you know. There's so many there. Um, last question: Damien Sandow, Joseph Park, Jack Swagger, and Dirty Dutch Mantel in the faction. Opinion. So basically, Dirty Dutch Mantel. You know who that is, don't you? That's uh, Zeb Coulter. Jack Swagger, Joseph Park, and Damian Sandow. Not really sure what... I guess the whole point of this faction would be Dirty Dutch Mantel and Jeff, Jack Swagger. That would be obvious. Damian Sandow is speaking against the masses. Joseph Park, though, what, 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 what position would he serve in this faction? I'm not sure I like this idea as a faction, unfortunately. And on that very somber note, we're going to... Yeah, come on, let's go! Come on, yeah! Get Monster, drink some Monster. On that very somber note, we're going to end this Q&A. Thank you very much for watching if you have indeed got to the end. Keep sending us in your questions as we do love to answer your questions. And now I'm going to hand you over to this monster wielding monster advertisement that is NJ. Thank you very much, people. This has been yet another QA. We keep enjoying these QAs, so they keep on coming, we keep on going. And now, people, hopefully you've had a good time watching this. If you haven't, we'll try better next time. But I'm pretty damn sure that you enjoyed this QA. You bear off. Till next time, for Mr. Parkin and me and Jay, goodbye. And if you want to talk that fast, you know exactly what to drink. It's called Monster!